I started short-term rental hosting in the first home that I bought and I quickly realized that it was gonna be much more than a side hustle. It was a full-fledged business. So what did I do? I tried to figure out how can I scale this as fast as possible. I looked at my garage and realized it was a totally unusable space. So the first thing I did is said, how can I make this unusable space usable? An ADU, an accessory dwelling unit. That means I basically converted that unusable garage space into an actual living area. I added a bathroom, I added a bed, and I marketed on platforms like Airbnb as a short-term rental. And lo and behold, I was in bigger business than before. Since making my ADU, have I seen other people make other tiny Airbnbs? Absolutely, it's become wildly popular over the last year, especially through the pandemic. People are wanting to stay in trailers, tiny houses on wheels, ADUs, and the list goes on and on. They want unique experiences and tiny spaces, tiny Airbnbs, give them those experiences that they're looking for. Some key aspects and principles in building a tiny Airbnb for your short-term rental business is understanding the local laws and ordinances. What does that mean? It means that you need to understand whether or not you can rent a tiny space in your area. For some areas, for example, some cities require that you have to have the place on a solid foundation. So a tiny house on wheels won't work. In some spaces, you have to stay a minimum of 30 days. That's crazy, right? But it's true for some people in some cities. So you have to do your research and figure out if that tiny house is gonna fit effectively in your short-term rental business model. By the way, if you find this information useful, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Thank you. When it comes to building out your own tiny house, one of the things that I did was purpose existing materials. I did a com what's called a conversion project. In a conversion project, you leverage existing walls or materials or wood to build out your property how you want to build it with cutting some of the costs of buying all those materials all over again. So I leveraged existing wood frames. I used some tile. I also used some flooring to make the tiny house really what I wanted it to become while saving some money. By making my tiny house a conversion project, I also saved on the permitting fees. For every tiny house that you build, you usually have to pay the city some set of permitting fees or building fees to set that structure up and make sure that it's built to code. So a conversion project is cheaper in most places than building net new. I also wanted to make sure that I focused on durability. If it's something that I'm spending a lot of money on and gonna be using it as a rental or component of my business, I wanna make sure that I can use it for a long time. So everything built on my ADU was built to codes and regulations established by the city. The codes and regulations are important to follow because they ensure that your structure is safe but also stands the test of time. I built a tiny home with safety in mind so that it could withstand the elements, but also ensure the safety of occupants. One of the best and coolest features of the tiny house, in my opinion, is its proximity to nature. I really wanted the house to feel like an immersive experience. It's set in a huge backyard underneath a brilliantly large eucalyptus tree full of nature. So I wanted people and renters and occupants to hear things like the squirrels running through the trees, the soft wind brushing through the, with the leaves and the birds chirping in the morning. So while you're in the tiny house, you can hear all those cool, beautiful sounds of nature outside, but it's also quiet enough to get a good night's sleep at night. The tiny house for my customer, for my guests, is really meant to be a small retreat in the middle of a big, loud city. That's what guests get when they come and visit a tiny home, a little retreat in a big, loud city. For the marketing side of things for the tiny house, we infused a lot of the same basics that we put in all of our other homes. We cater to artists and creative people, so we leveraged that in our social media marketing. We built an Instagram profile for the tiny house. We always talked about it on social media. We highlighted stories, little tidbits. We told people about experiences that we already had at the tiny house so that they could imagine their own experiences that they wanted to have in the tiny house as well. We even did something cool where we reached out to our local TV station and were featured as a spot in their morning show to highlight some of the cool things that the tiny house offers. And it took off from there. Once we got all the attention and buzzwords from all the things that we were doing on the news station and social media, we used magnets to attract more guests. And what do you mean by magnets, Michael? I mean, we used photos, we used short stories, we used highlights from people's experiences staying in the tiny house to market to future people who were thinking about staying in the tiny house as well. It allowed them to get a visual of what the tiny house experience could be and was offering to other people so that they can imagine their own experiences and want to stay and book the tiny house as well. So we used those tidbits, we used those magnets to attract more guests, and we just continued on and on from there. The business plan that you can follow to make your own tiny home is 
Again, understanding your market. Are you in a market that has a high demand for a single people or couples looking for small spaces? You need to understand the answer to that question before you start building your own tiny house. You also need to look at and examine your local laws. Are ADUs or tiny spaces allowed as Airbnbs in your area? Understand what your limitations are before committing a big expense like a tiny home and incorporating that in your short term rental business. Have a budget in mind and stick to it. Now, if you have the wrong builder or you have contractors that don't know what they're doing, you're going to very quickly overspend on your budget. Have a budget in mind that you want to stick to and be sure to find contractors and builders on your team to execute that tiny house to build the right way and stay on budget. And lastly, have a qualified builder. Don't just go with the person that's gonna charge you the least amount of money to build it. That is one of the worst things you could do. You're gonna end up causing yourself major headaches and probably overspending. Go with a builder who has experience and who gives you an example of some work that they've also completed themselves to ensure that you have a good builder on your hands a good person on your team to build the tiny house the way that it needs to be built. Hey, if you don't know who I am, my name is Michael Crockett. I built a six figure short term rental business in just 14 months, and I'm here to tell you that you can do it too. The goal of this channel is really to help you. I want to make sure that you guys have the knowledge and information that you need to start your own short term rental business. Yes, I want you to take action and build a business that I know you already want to build yourself. And if you like the content you see, if you can subscribe, it really helps me help you.